Thanks for the script, by the way. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I've gotten through like the first ten pages. Totally different. Yeah. It's all changed. They made it all up as they went along. Well, that's the whole point. That's, that's the whole point. Like You've got to be alive to these changes. Yeah. 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 Have you done many of these before? No, but my wife's an actress, so I've um, observed her. You've you've been in tow, have you? I've been, yeah, I've been kind of been doing like Anne does. I've been leaning against walls watching her for okay. ten years. Yeah. Well, did the tone of the story change as you wrote different drafts of the script? Do you think the first draft of the script is considerably different from the end product? Or? Yeah, it is. It 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 lightened. It definitely lightened, and I'm not. Um, yeah, it became um, happier, I think, uh, and the ending got bigger, as well, bigger and bigger with each draft. It was quite a down, it wasn't downbeat, but it was, it was more about guilt at first, I think, and it became, but I think you try and, rather than imposing something on it, you try and let it be what it's going to be and follow that. Um, I but guess what I want to get at is what was your first, well, not instinct, well, instinct, yeah, for where the script should go, that should it be a more serious look at the real dilemma that she finds herself in? I don't think in? it was serious, but it had a kind of dramatic shift halfway through that it didn't really work, where it was quite sprightly and funny up and for a while, and then when she started to feel seriously guilty, it went quite a long way down. And it was like, I kind of realised a couple of drafts in, I had to take a decision which film I was writing, basically. I could either write a more serious examination of guilt and do that thing, or kind of follow the stuff that I'd set up at the beginning, you know, the sprightly pre-wedding stuff, and, you know, the and the... The high conceptness of it as well, you know, walking up the aisle, see someone, the love of your life, all that, and it seemed to me to kind of call for a, a slightly more, um, uh, yeah, the, the, a slight change of tone than that. I mean, I think in a sense it happens anyway in the film. There's a slight battle between a kind of slightly indie sensibility and a mainstream sensibility, and the film doesn't always um, do both successfully. But um, it became brighter, definitely. What's really great about the movie for me is that you have this dichotomy of, on the one hand, the um, anxiety over commitment and what's the meaning of commitment, mm -hmm. and on the other hand, just this very romantic view of love at first sight, yeah. which I find is really romantic, but isn't always true. I mean, you can go and pick the most, uh, the worst monster in the room automatically, and it's love at first sight because they fit your neuroses, you know? Yeah, no, it's weird. I mean, love at first sight is a curly one, and the only thing that proves that it existed is if it survives. Do you know what I mean? I mean, we used to ask actors if they fell in love at first sight when they came in. You know, you've got to talk about something. And uh, Lena was actually came in and said, oh, yeah, four or five times a day. Um, which is a cracking answer. You know, and I mean, we, I think we all do. Um, but uh, I fell in love at first sight and married the person. And so, um, you know, it's been 10 years, so it's kind of, we sort of feel like we've proved it. Now. Is that the scene recreated at the end of the movie? That is not the scene recreated at the, in the movie. But, it, you know, there's an autobiographical thing there. So where did you see your wife? I'd written something and she walked in to uh, meet for it. She's an actress. And, um, and that was it, yeah. Gone. Well, I can't blame you. It's a good choice. Thank yeah. you. Um, but coming back to the way that the tone shifted, yeah. did you consider that maybe um, the film should be maybe slightly longer or that in some ways that, that ability to show that it was going to work out all right between the... Because they don't get a lot of couple time together. They fumble in the back they of the... Do, they don't get a lot of couple time. Yeah. Um, it's lots of things. You know, one is budget. Um, you know, we were pushed. I had fantastic producers and, you know, superb crew, but we were pushed, uh, you know. And it's interesting to be sitting here discussing scenes that were cut because, um, you know, um, I could have done with that time shooting other scenes. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yes, it could have been. I mean, I would have liked for it to be another... I'd have liked to have another 20 minutes to explore them. It's very hard. People falling in love is very hard as well. It's very hard to do. Um, I think what I'm saying is my take on the film is yeah. that by the end of the film, I'm so into your rhythm, their situations, mm -hmm. that I want it to go on for about another hour. Well, that would be... No, thank you for that. Yeah, no, I'd... Yeah. Um, the TV spin-off, maybe that'll satisfy you. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. The thing I wanted to ask, too, and, uh, you know, so excuse me, this sounds a little, um, I don't know, aggressive or something, but yeah. has this kind of comedy be replaced the English tradition of kitchen sink drama? Uh, you know, it is in a mold of The Girl in the Cafe would be another one I can think of recently. Yeah. You know, that you have these issues brought to the fore within the context of a light comedy, um, and then they're kind of back, backstoried in a way. Yeah. Is, on the one hand, is this becoming a new tradition or a new voice in English cinema, and is it showing London and England as you live in it? It's a good question, mate. I've got no idea. It's such a good question. I can't possibly answer that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, they still exist. The kitchen sink drama still exist. Ken Loach makes his films, and I watch yeah. them, and they're brilliant, and, um, and plenty of others. Um, but it is a way to... Um, it's an optimistic way to discuss issues. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a, you know, like I said, I don't think this is a hugely issue-based film, but I love the fact that, it, um, that uh, 
within the gay and lesbian communities, it seems to be making people happy, and it's made gay friends of mine that have seen it happy. And, you know, that's great. Um, and if it you know makes people feel easier about things that are difficult for them, then that's fantastic. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's the way that I write. I guess you try and not be polemical and obscure whatever you want to say within. Hopefully, make people laugh. Sugar the pill. Well. Let me rephrase the second part of the question. Yes. Is this, does the film, as it's finished, when you watch it, feel like life as you're living it? Or is it a different version of oh, it's a slightly, an idealized it's version? It's a slightly idealized version of life. They're all gorgeous. And um, they're, they're all lovely, and uh, the weather's nicer. We were lucky with the weather. Mm -hmm. London doesn't look like that normally. Um, uh, no, it's idealized. And, um, but it'd be nice to think that if you came out to your parents, they'd be like that. It'd be nice to think that all your friends would be that groovy. It'd be nice to think that you're husband that you left forgave you and you know was happy again six months later on a plane with somebody else um it's idealized it's a film well i want their flat and again it's nice to think that they can afford to live there yeah we didn't show you half of it, it was such a nice place really oh yeah. it's always a uh, okay it's a practical location but it's like space and depth and it's filmmaking but it's kind of like friends it's like yeah what are they doing living there mm -hmm. so we are talking a little bit earlier about putting in deleted scenes when you look at the finished film how would you sort of grade your performance as the writer and director Oh God, low, shocking. I mean, you just but yeah, you just look at it and go, really? oh, yeah, screw that up, screw that up. Very poor as writer and poor as, as director. Why? Can you expand on that? Uh, oh God, so many scenes you just go, yeah, and tank that, failed that, failed the actors there. But that's, I mean, you should do. If you, I think if you, I, I, the idea that you'd sit and masturbate over your work is is nonsense. I think you should hopefully look to. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of forgiving. It's my first movie, and um, and I don't know if they'll let me do it again. And I had a ball doing it, and. Um, we all had a ball thing, and we had a nice time, and that was really important to me. Um, so I kind of watch it, you know, forgivingly, and, and I love what everyone else does in it, but um, for my own work, yeah, I mark myself pretty low. So I'm going to try and get a clip from Loved Up. We'll see if we can um, okay. show the arc or something. Okay. Okay, thanks very much. You're welcome. All right. Cheers, man. Cheers. Oh, no, no, no. Okay.